Minecraft super flat. It's like a regular Minecraft world, except super flat. Yeah, who would have thought? One layer of bedrock, two layers of dirt, and one layer of grass. That's it. To someone who thinks that the earth is flat, yeah, this world is a lovely place to be. But to survival players, this terrain seems impossible to survive on. But that didn't stop me from spending 100 days in a super flat world in hardcore. No respawns, just one life. Can I live for these 100 days and achieve my goal of remaking a regular Minecraft world in super flat? Stay tuned and find out. And of course, Luke the Notable inspired this video, so his links to both his channel and series will be in the description below. Also, I'm trying out different content styles, so if you end up enjoying the video and want to see 200 days, then hit that like button and comment what you'd like to see next time. And I'm aiming for 5,000 subscribers by the end of 2021, but only subscribe if you feel like it, I won't force you. And without further ado, enjoy la video. Day one, I spawned right next to a village, which was kind of lucky since villages are going to be the only way that I get things that are in dirt or slime balls. I ransacked a home and got some taters, baguettes, and apples, along with two emeralds, in addition to the wood from the floor of the home and cobblestone from the outside. I also stole this farm's taters and seeds, since you can never have too much food, especially in hardcore, because without it, you die. I also found this church, which I decided to put my bed in. Who cares if it's haunted? I don't mind ghost villagers watching me sleep. In fact, it makes me kind of cozy. After getting situated in the haunted church, I raided the rest of the village and found a library. The librarian wanted to trade a Curse of Vanishing book, which is quite possibly the worst book in the game. That was reason enough to destroy his job so that I could employ somebody else. Remember villagers, don't sell bad books or I'll completely make you unemployed. I also killed the neighborhood hunk. His name was Todd. I don't like Todd's, which is why I killed Todd. I also needed iron for an axe and Todd would become that iron axe. Hunks kill slimes, which are spawning every second, no matter day or nighttime. But ones named Todd need to be killed before they organize a revolution against me. There's a long history of that in my family. Don't ask questions about it. There was also a fletching table in the village, meaning that I could finally trade sticks for emeralds. Fletching tables need flint to make, and since I couldn't get any gravel in my flat world, I need to break every single workstation that I saw. I also destroyed Todd's friend, Thod. His name was too close to Todd to be kept alive. Day two, I started by making some ladders to start making a sky base at Y level 40. Why, why, why level 40, you ask? Well, since slime spawned below Y level 40, and because the ground is flat, Slime spawn just constantly, all the time, to annoy me. By getting above 40 though, I'd be safe from these green chunks of goo and I could have peace with my hot Minecraft villager girlfriend. <clears throat> Wait, what? Uh, who said that? Getting to the sky was quick and I set up a mini platform to expand my territory. Since there are so many slimes outside on the hunt for a handsome boy like me though, I need to collect dirt that is under my home. Thank goodness the world has three layers of dirt for me to mine, because if there was only two, then I'd be dead to the slimes. Day three, I was expanding my dirt mine. I wanted to expand my sky base to invoke fear in villagers below, and you guessed it, people named Todd. Sorry to everyone named Todd, I, I just don't like that name. Comment Frick Todd and I'll heart your comment. Okay, I'll stop complaining about Todd. Anyways, moving on from my rant of names, I expanded my dirt platform with the dirt that I mined and made a nice plot of land. Then I traveled to the surface to visit a neighboring village. I was hoping to find more loot for me to ransack. This village also had a library, which I destroyed instantly. I'm not book smart, I just have a lot of books. It also had this leather thing, which was exciting because it gave me baguettes and leather pants. No longer naked, baby! Days 4-7, to seven, I spent nomading other villages around mine. I was really looking for a blacksmith so that I could get diamonds or obsidian to make another portal, but I was not shying away from this smooth stunt. Stuff is beautiful, I'm not leaving it. This village hunk was massacring a village of slimes, and his name was George, so, you know, I let him live. Two blacksmiths, have I won the village lottery? That was cringe. I was hoping for good loot, though, and I luckily got a diamond and iron pants from one blacksmith. I also got lava for the first time, and the other blacksmith was complete garbage. Not surprised. The next village I found had another blacksmith, and wow, what a shock. It was garbage. Except for this chest plate, that was cool. Next one was amazing, though. I got seven whole obsidian. Three more, and I can go to the nether. And almost on cue, the next blacksmith that I found actually had four obsidian, meaning that I could get to the nether. I'm so happy that I sprung into a mating dance. The women love this dance in my hometown. No, no women here though. <coughs> Days eight to nine, I wanted to get to the nether as fast as possible. I couldn't get flint for a flint and steel though, so I had to use the lava and a wood block to light it. This process took not one, but two whole days to complete. The wood just wouldn't catch fire even if I shot that thing with a volcano. But eventually the portal was lit and I could finally get to the nether. That sounds pleasant. I needed a break from the bouncing green cubes that won't shut up under me. Day 10, I was going to the nether. The spawn wasn't too bad. It was right next to a crimson forest and nether wastes. I explored minimally, but I stopped to get quartz and nether gold ore. It was impossible to get that stuff in the overworld, so I needed to get a solid amount of it here. I also got crimson longs as I wanted to use them in my home later on. Yo, give me the goods, will you big boy? Thyres? Yeah, he can live. There was also Soul Sand Valley nearby, so I grabbed some calcium blocks from my strong bones and the meal of the bone. Day 11, how have I not had a cobblestone generator yet? Let's fix that. 
I also wanted to start construction on a water elevator all the way up to my sky base for that easy access. Or at least faster than the stupid ladder. Thing is slower than a snail on opposite steroids. This was a long process. I need to have source blocks for the comm to work, meaning that I had to place each and every water block one at a time. I'd rather watch paint dry than do this process again. It, it was torture. I could have just used kelp to get the source blocks, but guess who wasn't showing up? This idiot. And his dumb llamas that spit on your face every d second. Yes, his prices are hot trash, but I'm damn near desperate for anything at this point. Day 12, I had two people eager to use the unfinished elevator, but luckily I placed the last source block and we already had two villagers up in the Sky Hotel. Saved me a lot of time, otherwise I would have had to toss up stacks of baguettes to get them up there. The villagers up there loved it so much that they even brought a friend. And yeah, the saying is true, I will never see three pretty best friends. These guys are ugly. Mirrors shatter when they look at their reflection, I swear. I also brought up all the junk from my haunted church, and may I just say that this bubble elevator is just magnificent. It's just so speedy, I love it. Day 13, I was getting absolutely assaulted by slimes. Like, bro, chill out a little bit. Let me know what mob you think is the most annoying in the comments, but for me, it is these dang slimes. These things just bounce until the end of time and just hit you with their body mass. I also set up a hotel in my haunted church so that at night, all villagers would come to stay and I could send them up the water elevator. It's the hotel's gift to you, drowning you. It's fun. I mined dirt under my house for a while, and when I came back to the surface, some guy actually decided to check into my hotel. Probably because I took his bed and put it there, but I mean, it works. Day 14, I started plotting out my home and expanding my sky base with the dirt I got the previous night. I wanted to make a home similar to the ones that the villagers had on the surface, so I used oak logs and cobblestone. Yeah, that's a lie. Those were just the only blocks that I had on hand. What have you spruce wood if the wandering turd and his spitmobiles showed up on time? I did have some crimson logs in my chest though, so I decided to use them in the build and honestly, I think it looks kind of nice. Also, these villagers were thirstier than I thought and started reproducing at like 4 p.m. on a Sunday. These dudes are wild. You just give them some baguettes and they make children. Just like, what is happening? Days 15 to 17, I was nomading the heck out of the surrounding territories. Nomading wasn't a verb, but guess what? Now it is. Of course, I was looking for blacksmiths, and the first one that I found had junk in it. I also found clay in this house, which I took immediately and scammed this dude named Mason with. It was his own clay, and I sold it back to him for an emerald. Prime example of people named Mason in their natural habitat. Sorry, people named Mason, but I did this throughout my nomad trips because it, it was just too easy. Like, bro, I'm literally taking your stock and selling it to you. Have you not noticed that your entire supply is gone? I also found a leather house thing, which I was happy about because sometimes they have saddles. And somehow on this first home, there was actually a saddle, which meant that I could now get a horsey and travel so much faster. I literally stole this man's blocks in front of his eyes and he still paid me. Don't be like Mason, guys. Just be better. But anyways, back in my platform, you know what I had to do. The crouch dance. The, the women. women. They love it. Anyways, I went back to the nether and found a bastion like 100 blocks away from my portal. I would have raided it then, except for the fact that I got no balls. So instead, I decided that raiding a bastion would be a goal that I do later on in the episode. Make sure you stay tuned to the end, because that was just... <laughs> oh my gosh. Days 18 to 21, I was nomading for a horsey. I had the saddle out, and I wanted to ride my own pony. I found two in a nearby village and tested both of them out, but ultimately I thought that this white one was a little bit faster. Leave your best name for this horse in the comments below, and the most liked one will be the horse's name. I'm leaning towards Kog, but if you have a better suggestion, feel free to let me know in the comments. I took this thing for a ride, and holy smokes, this boy was speedy. At least compared to my stumpy legs, I was like a sloth in comparison. I continued ransacking everything that I saw, whether it was chests, bookshelves, workstations, clay so that I could scam Mason, even this blacksmith chest, and this thing was practically crafted of garbage. But after riding my horsey back home, I spent the night building up my humble abode by making both the floor and expanding my sky base with some extra dirt that I had in my chest. Day 22 was the day of the J'ai presque fait caca mon pantalon. You'll need to Google Translate that to figure out what it means. I forgot to light up the area under my sky base and unexpected Karens had arrived at my hotel. I was getting cornered by slimes, creepers, skeletons, my math teacher, everyone. I was more scared of my math teacher than the mobs, to be honest with you. When the creeper did blow up, it only made more slimes, which was great, but I took it like a man- Oh, no, I, uh, I paused the game. Um, yeah, that I did. Don't blow up, don't- Aw, oh, man, come on. A guy really cannot catch a break on super flat, can he? Day 23, I was noticing a weird issue with the original three residents of my Sky Hotel. All the other villagers were like, okay, but these ones were dumber than a table. They continuously tried to get down the water elevator, even though there were tons of beds nearby. I don't know if these guys were like dropped as babies or something. I don't know, but the point is that there are lamps brighter than these guys. And because of their combined two IQ, I refer to these guys as the idiot trio. They may rival Masons, I can't lie. I also looked behind my house and saw an insane amount of cats spawning. These villagers really spawned a lot of things while I was gone. Not sure how they can make cats, iron golems, and villagers. Like, what is going on with their bodies that allows them to do this? Day 24, guess who was still up? If you guessed the idiot trio, then you'd be correct. I decided to fish in an infinite water pool for some fish to tame a cat. 
There were just like way too many of them and I really wanted to get another pet in addition to my horsey. This gray and white one got stuck in my floor hole, so I gave her some salmon and now she was mine. I didn't name this cat during this video either, so if, leave your best name suggestions in the comments below and I'll heart my favorite ones. I'm leaning towards Giuseppe Alfaso, but feel free to let me know your other names. Day 25, I was in the nether mining some calcium blocks and crimson logs, and when I got back, and guess who was at my portal? It was the idiot trio. And they were bullying my cat by pushing him all over the place and staring down for every last fish he got. My defenseless cat was in his thoughts when he was being bullied. But this was the last straw for me. You could mess with me all you want, but as soon as you touch my cat, I'ma clap your cheeks so hard they start an earthquake. So that night, while my 2 plus IQ villagers slept, I murdered the idiot trio. Luckily, they meet at the same spot each night, and also my platform isn't big, so it didn't take long to find them and kill them. I thought about leaving this one since he seemed to not like getting axed in the cranium, but he headed back to the water elevator and I smacked his bald head until he died. Nobody saw anything, right? <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Day 26, I woke up and I was immediately suspicious of this man. He looked at me like he knew my previous crimes from last night. I don't care. The trio had to die. I also began my terraforming project, even though I had less dirt than a public bathroom's toilet. Perhaps a bribe will make you forget of my crimes? Hmm, yes, let's try that. That was really cringe, but day 27, I spent expanding my house. I didn't have a roof or walls yet, but hey, I don't care. Day 28, this lunatic spawned and got me down to one heart. Oh yeah, this is definitely the Chief Todd. I got up above him and clapped his iron abs so hard he disintegrated into a poppy. Then my apparently trustworthy villagers spawned another Todd who charged after me like a bull seeing red. I didn't have a clue as to why I was being mauled by every iron golem that spawned, but maybe that's because I was too distracted by these tiny children running by. Day 29, I had to stop watching the children run around because apparently it's making them uncomfortable. Pfft, kidding. But anyways, I managed to get on the surface with my horse and build up a staircase to my platform. This would serve as a highway from grass to spread so that my sky hotel wouldn't be a brown wasteland. What are you doing, bro? You can't get me, you idiot. Oh, God! Seeing as nighttime was the only time that Todd's didn't spawn, I tear from throughout the night. Nothing like a mound of crap on your land to finish off day 29. This guy appears to be passive. I guess his name isn't Todd. Oh, uh, nope, never mind. He's pissed at me. I was also looking for those fletching tables so that I could convert some sticks to money. Papa Terrain was looking for those Benjamins. Boo -boo -bay. I don't know what the heck I just said, but day 31, I went to go trade with this guy and my jaw dropped. Why did this man raise his prices? Like, what did I do to him? And then I realized, remember the idiot trio that I killed in cold blood for bullying my cat? Well, this Fletcher wasn't closing his eyes while he was sleeping. He's nocturnal, like an owl. A kid playing Minecraft for a hundred days on a Superfly world so that he can make a video about it on his YouTube channel. This man knows exactly what I did, and now I must pay for my actions. Actually, I have to pay with 12 more sticks to trade, but oh well, I still need money. Hopefully, by getting other villagers to become Fletchers, they'll have normal prices like this guy. Oh, god damn. I decided to trap this neighborhood hunk rather than kill him. His name is Andy, and he may be an aggressive idiot right now, but hey, he's our idiot. Side note, it's Andy's birthday today, so please wish him happy birthday in the comments before he uh, murders me. Day 32, I planted a bunch of carrots and forgot to stop recording, so here's a clip of me watching something. Uh, a nod or a compliment uh, in terms of the guy that kind of innovated. I have no idea what I was watching there, but anyways, the carrots went straight to my Sky Hotel customers since they hadn't eaten in 30 days. Just kidding, I only fed them so that they'd lower their prices and forget about the incident of day 25. They can starve, that's fine, I just want good prices. Surprisingly, it started working and some of the villagers actually lowered their prices for me. I had been trading even when their prices were high, and it took me until this day to realize that I had enough for 17 emerald blocks. That made me the Jeff Bezos of this world. Actually, it made me the richest and poorest person, because I'm alone. <laughs> that was a bad sound. Day 33 was a grand feast, and it resulted in many more children to play tag around my Sky Hotel. I'm glad it was children rather than more cats. Or Todds. I also ventured away from my platform to steal other men's beds. My customers need the finest memory foam in all the land, and I'm making sure that they get it. Also, you know what I had to do. Thanks for the free cash, Mason, you dumbo. Day 34, I returned from my bed nomad and realized that I had an alarming amount of these mattresses. Like, dear God, this place looks like a trampoline park. And surely enough, my great carrot handouts initiative was going great, and the residents were warming up to me and lowering their prices. Yeah, this is a concerning amount of beds. It's looking like an outdoor key at this point. Days 35 to 37, I was ransacking the heck out of everything in the surrounding area, including that sweet... Sweet smooth stone. <laughs> this whole adventure was sponsored by Garbage Luck and a Waste of Time. Use coupon code, please subscribe to the terrain at checkout for 35% off of your purchases. Minecraft gods really hated me these past two days, like, oh my goodness. Day 38, I was relieved to be back home and even happier to see that the stick prices were good again. Those carrots really paid off. I also decided to burn Andy today. He was a good soul, but he shall always stay aggressive in my heart. 
RIP Andy in the chat, boys. Luckily, the next Tonic that spawned was chill too, and his name was, uh, Warge Joshington. Yep, that's him. Good old Warge. For the rest of the day, I plotted out a mini pond that I wanted to build. I wanted to change the scenery from my brown land, and the pond just kind of felt right. Day 39, I managed to finish the big hole and flooded that bad boy up with water. In the end, it looked like this. Yep, definitely a pond. You can tell because there's a... There's water in a hole. Yep, that's that's a pond. Uh, nothing happened that morning. R.I.P. towards Joshington. <laughs> Day 40, the beds were being loaded with newcomers. Like I said, these villagers were reproducing at record speed. I'm not sure what their family tree is at this point, but I'm guessing it looks something like this. Moving on from the mutant family tree, I did a lot of terraforming around the pond today, and it was still looking super ugly without grass up here, but it was looking a little bit better. Day 41, I woke up and chose violence. I must have realized that overpopulation was happening, and I needed to burn people. Also, I mined dirt. Interesting gameplay, I know. Day 42, I was out in the nether to find ancient debris. I didn't have a diamond pickaxe, and I was only mining in a straight line, so the chance that I was about to find some was super slim. And, uh, yeah, unsurprisingly, I didn't find it. Wait, what? I actually found a piece? Okay. Uh, not complaining. Days 43 to 44, no surprise, I was looking for diamonds to make that pickaxe to mine that ancient debris. You can only find diamonds in blacksmiths, so I had to travel far and wide to get at least three diamonds to make a pickaxe. Unfortunately, like my last nomad trips, these blacksmiths were crafted of trash. I did get quite a bit of obsidian, but it's not like I'm going to need that anymore, so I don't care. Game, if you do not give me at least three diamonds in this chest, I swear to God, I am burning down this entire village to the ground and summoning Herobrine on these natives. Please. The village has been destroyed. Day 46, I was back home in diamondless. <laughs> I also had to burn this hunk. He was nice, but I wanted iron. R.I.P. Jamis Tefferson. I don't know why I'm going with the opposite names of presidents, but whatever. This iron allowed me to level up a weaponsmith, which meant that I could finally get diamond tools. Instead of a pickaxe, though, they gave me a diamond axe, which I was not mad about either. Speaking of which, where are all these other villagers? Holy mother of God. Well, I know what I have to do. Day 47, I was in tears watching Frenjamin Bankland die. He was holding a to Joshington. <laughs> but I had to level up this weapon smith, and level up he did, offering a shiny new diamond sword. Then he started making a child in front of me. What a chad. Day 48, I found out that you can make toolsmiths, which give you actual tools. Should have just done that in the first place to get a diamond pickaxe. The children liked watching Redoth Thozevelt burn. Yeah. I don't know why a demon just came into me, but I got a bunch of money today, and then lit this poor soul on fire. He managed to get on top of a tree though, so I let him live. Being athletic is respectable. Hence why I have no respect in real life. Don't make fun of me. Me and my 92 pounds are still very handsome. Day 50, the video is halfway over and I'm legally obligated to remind you that it's free to like this video and subscribe. I'm just saying. I finally got a diamond pickaxe today and I could finally get some debris of ancient. I had to buy an overwhelming amount of chainmail armor to level this armor up. Does anybody actually wear chainmail? Comment if you have, because I don't think I've ever actually equipped this stuff in regular Minecraft. But it paid off because I got offered a fresh set of diamond leggings and boots. And with that, I retired my old gear on an armor stand in my house. Or what should be my house, minus, you know, a roof. Back in the nether, I was mining that ancient debris that I found a while ago, but I was playing it real safe. Good thing that I did, because this lava would have turned me extra crispy. But I got it, and I didn't turn into ash brown while doing it, so, you know, big W. Next day, I was using that memory foam cush to explode holes in the nether. Needless to say, I was being unbelievably cautious while doing it, but the whole voyage was a big success. And I managed to find quite a bit of ancient debris using my hotel's mattresses. Knew they'd come in handy someday. I even got lucky just strip mining with an iron pickaxe, lighting five guys burgers and fries. Day 52, I was back home and smelted the five ancient debris that I found in total, which was enough to make a full netherite ingot. The first one that I've ever actually made legitimately, in fact. I also worked a tiny bit on my house since it was day 52 and I wasn't even close to done. Also, has this dude been stuck in a tree this whole series? Villager in the tree, what, what will he, he do? do? Sorry for the cringe there. I tried to get a manning villager today, which I thought would be a lot easier, but these guys just wouldn't become a librarian. This guy eventually did though, and on my first trade, I got a mending book for 10 emeralds. Does this game hate me or love me? I, I just can't tell. Needless to say, I locked his trades immediately, and it seemed illegal to be getting that book for 10 emeralds. Day 53, my skinny homeboy was carrying around a grass block, so I smacked him until he dropped it on the ground. With this grass block, my platform can finally turn green. Only took 53 days. I also started construction on a villager trading hall for my three important merchants and 20 useless ones. Of course, I use smooth stone for this bad boy, because the best villagers deserve the best block. Actually, the best block is spruce wood, but the wandering Tartar and his mucus animals won't show up. Are they, like, lost? 
In a super flat world, I think that'd be a little hard since there's only flat land and my base sticks out like a sore thumb, but okay. Anyways, I found out how to craft andesite and started putting it around my base to texture stone, and I really like how it's turned out. Day 54, I was tearing down a staircase I made a while ago to move it closer to the door. These two brothers had the sole objective of pissing me off as much as possible, so I did the normal thing and, uh, you know, poured lava on their bodies. Don't freak with me, bald guys. I will burn you to a McDonald's hash brown. Days 55 to 57 was house expansion time. I set aside spaces for an enchanting area and a kitchen, and I also remade that staircase and started story 2. I also trapped my mending villager in the villager trading hall and his brethren followed. Yes, hotel residents. Follow the mysterious trail of carrots. Dang, I forgot I haven't fed these guys since day 22. That explains why they're willing to be trapped for 50 days to eat one single vegetable. Yes, my grindstone guy, get in the wall. After this experience, I got five villagers in the hall and I finally noticed the villager in the tree. I put a sign down to represent his very productive life. Villager in the tree, what, what will he do, do in the, the tree though? Day 58, I was duplicating dirt by making coarse dirt, hoeing it, and then mining it. You're welcome for editing this entire day out. It was boring as balls. Get in thy hole, bald guy. Also, mi amor started selling diamond chest plates and diamond helmets, meaning that I could finally get full diamond armor as soon as I got enough money. Day 60 to 64, I wasn't focused on diamond armor. No siree, I was focused on the big boys, netherite. I went mining with beds in the nether for a total of four days, and I managed to scrape up five ancient debris, which I quickly smelted for ancient scraps. Wait, ancient scrap? Netherite scraps? I'm dumb. And with another netherite scrap that I had, I managed to make a whole new netherite ingot, but I was saving it for now. I also started some upstairs rooms of the house. This went on for a long time, but building is boring, so I cut most of it out. If you guys want to see a 200 days with more- Dude, I'm just trying to record my voice. If you guys want to see a 200 days video with morph building, then let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you'd like me to build. I'm thinking a giant obsidian cockle doodle do. It's day 65 and Papa's got enough cash for a diamond chest plate. That voice transition was smooth, you can't even lie. The rest of the day I spent gathering resources like magma blocks, which I never even ended up using, and dirt to expand my sky hotel. Day 66, I was building a mob grinder for the first time in this world and in my Minecraft career. I didn't have any blocks though, so I had to use netherrack. It's ugly, but so are mobs, so it sort of made sense. Day 67, I finished up the mob farm entirely, and oh yeah, this thing is hideous. Stands out like a sore thumb, but I mean, it, it kind of works, so that's fine. Day 68, I made my own enchanting table with the two diamonds that I got from blacksmiths a while back. I also had enough bookshelves from when I disassembled that one library, or two, or twenty. I, I didn't really keep count. Day 69, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nothing happened this whole day. I mined soul sand. You know it's boring when I condense 20 minutes into 9 seconds, but yeah, let's move on. The next two days I was gathering nether resources, and this included a lot of nether gold ore. I wanted a ton of golden apples for my upcoming bastion brawl, and I needed to stock up on regeneration. Speaking of the devil, I got a closer look to it. It looked promising, but it's hard to tell with these things. It looks good on the outside, and then you go in and find a few string in the chest. Sort of like the wandering twerp. You think he has good stuff for you, and then he has one seed pickle for 30 emeralds. Anyways, Team Trees, baby. I'm years late, but it still matters. Is it Taco Bell bong time? I think it's Taco Bell bong time. Yes, sir. Day 73, I realized I needed to work on my home. It was an objective of the series, if you don't remember, and I'm running out of time real quick. Also, Minecraft glitched when I tried to burn on Jadams, and I placed two lava buckets instead of one. This is fine. Everything is A-OK. -okay. I got this under control. Not a big deal. I'm not okay. Clearly, I didn't learn my lesson the next morning as I did it again. Then I had a 20 minute brain fart trying to figure out where to place crimson longs. Like I get that symmetry is important, but we are running super close to day 100 and we still don't have a roof, man. Just place blocks anywhere. I don't care. Right click now. This is the end of the day result. I've seen ancient Egyptian scrolls in better shape than this roof, but it's coming along. Day 74, it rained for the first time ever. I never realized how big of a drought this world has. Like there was no place for water to be anywhere. How does anything live out here? Actually, I don't care. This is Minecraft. Day 75, I was finishing my Torah scroll roof up. I also got a fresh diamond pickaxe from my boy Abe. Once a regular at my Sky Hotel, Abe now spends his days trapped in a villager-sized hole and surrounded by asbestos. Comment asbestos Abe if you made it this far. I just want to see you got to this point without clicking off after hearing my raspy and annoying voice. And today, the roof was finally done. Only took me like 40 days, but yeah, I was proud. Remember that brain fart that I had on day 73? It hath returned to mine soul. It took two days. Two days for my small brain to figure out basic counting. Finally got it though, took me long enough. Day 79 to 80 was storage time, which basically means throwing all my junk into random chests that I had. Organization sounds like a 200 day problem. For now, magma goes here, I think. I've seen toddlers that organize better than this. At least I have a sense of what shouldn't go where, but I just don't have that. I managed to scrape up enough twigs to sell to my Fletchers, and with my cash, I swiftly purchased a diamond helmet. Full diamond armor and only 20 days left to make it netherite. 
Day 81, remember those netherite ingots that I had? I did too. Now they are in a chest plate and leggings. Definitely worth it. The rest of the day was a bed nomad across the flat land. I wanted to fill up on beds to go mining in the nether. Side note, what is this glitch? I was sleeping on the ground. What is happening? Day 82, I needed to get rid of these beds in the nether. I needed to get eight ancient debris in total to finish off my armor. So that was my goal for this expedition. And after all the bed placing exploded, I managed to get nine ancient debris, which let me make two whole netherite ingots. And you know, I immediately made that netherite helmet and netherite boots. Oh yeah, I was soaking in debris. That's, that sounded awful. Cut that from the video. Days 83 to 84, me and my pony went on a nomad voyage for a scarce resource. One of the rarest in a super flat world. Wool. That's right, the thing that sheep grew. We were ransacking that. I wanted to get wool to make carpets for that mob grinder I built a little while ago. I'm not sure why, but it was just absolute garbage. So I thought that placing carpets would help. It did not. Not at all. I also enchanted my netherite chestplate with Unbreaking 3 and Protection 4. Not too shabby. I wanted to enchant my other gear, but my cleric wasn't selling any more lapis. He said no siree, and those powerful words were enough to turn me away. So instead, for the rest of the day, I fished in my pond. I hadn't done anything with my pond, and my cat hadn't eaten in a literal lifetime, so I thought she could use a snack. 85 of these men were exchanging drugs behind my house. I left them off with a warning. Do it again, and I push you off the Sky Hotel. The mob farm was also bustling with monsters, and my math teacher decided to stop by, and she dropped sugar. Turns out sugar is overpowered and super flat, but I just didn't even care. My netherite helmet got fire protection and unbreaking too, which made me feel very powerful. Day 86, I managed to get a silk touch trade for 19 emeralds. I locked it in as soon as I could because I really wanted to get a silk touch pickaxe soon for new blocks. I also retired my prized diamond pickaxe. It served me well for a very long time, but it was time to get a new pickaxe. I wanted to make my new pickaxe silk touch, but of course the first enchant that I get is fortune 3. Great. The polar opposite of what I wanted. I took it though, because it's still good, just not silk touch. Day 87, I had to test out my fortune 3 pick, and yeah, I made the right choice. This thing gave me so much course and XP, it was insane. I felt so powerful that I launched this ball of garbage back at this bald guy. Yeah, eat it, gassed. I kept exploring and somehow found another bastion even closer to my portal. I decided to dip my little toes into this one, and I played it ultra safe with a bow. These brutes are terrifying, man. Scarier than my math teacher. And that is... That is really saying something. The loot in here was okay, just some ores, obsidian, and gold, but I got out really quick. Don't want to be in here with the brutes, they'll kill me easily. Back home, I enchanted my shovel and got fortune 3. I thought this enchant was rare. Why am I getting it all the time now? Ahem, <clears throat> nothing happened on this day. Nope. Nothing at all. Day 88, I was finishing off my villager trading hall. I even pulled a cookie god moment and used leaves on this build, and he is right, this thing was looking amazing. I also put an emerald on an item frame to signify this build's purpose. Making that moolah, baby. I gotta stop with the cringe, but I made it to make iron for an anvil, and unfortunately, that meant the demise of this dude. But hey, popping has got an anvil now. First thing I did was use that mending book on my pickaxe. And pause the video, what do you think I was gonna name my pickaxe? Perhaps something like Terrain's Pickaxe? Maybe something like Pick Astley? Maybe even a name such as Like the Video. Is that, that your final guess? Wrong. I, uh, well, I called it Toothpick. I, I don't know why. But with mending on my pickaxe, I can now repair it with XP, which was pretty much free at my mob grinder, so hey, might as well. I used the rest of my twig money to buy more mending books for my tools and armor, starting with my shovel. What do you think I called this one? Maybe, uh, David Spade? Nope. Dirt Collector. Dirk, wh why am I naming it Dirk Collector? I also added another item to my memorial wall, my damaged golden boots, which served me well and protected me from piglins since almost day 10. Piglins knew I was valid with these babies on, but it was time to get a new pair. Day 90, I put mending on my axe. What will I call it this time? Maybe something like pickaxe minus pick? Maybe axe deodorant? Wrong. I actually called it something that you should definitely do right now, this way it's a constant reminder for you to do it. Day 91, it was time to test out the Efficiency 5 shovel for the first time, and oh my goodness, this boy was speeding. Much easier than mining with a stone shovel, that's for sure. Can't believe I didn't get a diamond shovel earlier. This makes dirt mining like ASMR, whereas mining with a stone shovel was like listening to teeth grind. With all this dirt, I decided to expand my pond a little bit. Completely forgot about this area, I won't lie, but I wanted to make it look presentable for my 100 days finale. And I went all out with the terraforming on this one. Definitely my favorite part of the compound so far, without a doubt. Day 92, it was time to get that Silk Touch pickaxe that I've been wanting. What do you think I named it? Silky Smooth? Silk Touch Milk Clutch? Perhaps just Iron Pickaxe? All wrong. Correct answer is Silky Smooth Hair and Body Wash. I, I just... Why am I naming it that? Day 93, I returned to the haunted church to grab its windows from my sky hotel. There was no sand in this world, so I had to steal windows from other people, which I didn't feel bad about at all. I put these pans on my windows and it was looking fantastic. I mean, there was already natural sunlight coming through my holes and my roof, but 
I mean, it still looked good. Day 94 was spring cleaning. I had a bunch of random chainmail armor that must be sacrificed to Satan. Bye bye, garbage. Days 95 to 96, I repaired my mending tools by mining quartz in the nether. I think I also had mending on my armor, but I can't find the clip and there's no way I'm looking back at 33 hours of footage to find that one part. And yes, I did just say 33 hours of footage. If you're at this part and you haven't already, maybe consider liking and subscribing so we can have 5,000 subs by the end of the year, because this took 100 hours to record and edit, and I'd really appreciate it. Also, comment silky smooth hair and body wash so we can confuse everyone in the comments who didn't make it this far, and I'll heart your comment. Day 97, I had so much flint that I needed to sell ASAP. I was like flint lockwood minus the lock and wood. Just flint. I also smelted that one ancient debris, and I had enough for a netherite ingot, which I used on good old toothpick. And the rest of the day, I spent preparing for my Bastion raid tomorrow on day 98. And that next day, I was at the Bastion near my portal and ready to raid it. I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't about to poop bricks while entering this thing. I was playing it unbelievably safe, as you can see by my primary use of the bow. I said it earlier and I said it again, these piglin brutes terrify me. One swipe from them and you're dead. And since this is hardcore, there's no respawns, so I gotta be really careful in this place. So careful to the point where it's literally stressful to watch me go through it. Remember what I said on day 70? Yeah, that point still stands. This place was made of garbage. I also eventually realized that I had full enchanted netherite armor and my whole scaredy cat method of raiding pretty much died in a second. Like I saw these two guys come in full force and honestly, fourth graders punch harder than this. I left with only a scratch and got back home to my garbage loot peacefully. Day 99, I hung up one of the pickling brutes axe that it dropped. My memorial wall was filling up, but just like my parents, I do hoard crap, so it makes sense. My parents actually watch my videos, so they're gonna kill me, but the rest of the day, I was cleaning up my storage and making my Sky Hotel look a little bit better. First order of business was making this nether portal look, oh, I don't know, good. I put blackstone around it, filled in the corners, and even put soul lanterns on the side. I honestly really like how it came out, even if it doesn't fit the surroundings at all, and I also chopped down the forest for this final time in these 100 days. Which led up to day 100, my final day on this world, and I hadn't died a single time. But this was still the day, and it was the day that I finished up my roof and backside of my house finally. I did some texturing on the base using andesite and cobblestone, did some fishing for my cat, and even made a pen for my horsey. I even made it cozier with some grass paths and a water trough for him. That night, I took a final look at my villagers and fed the one and only villager in the tree. The world may never know what he will do. I visited my pond for the last time to look around and that had to kick some smelly guy out of my bed so that I could finally end off this 100th day in hardcore super flat. And that is the end of this video. If you enjoyed, then maybe hit that like button and subscribe for 200 days and comment what you want to see in those 200 days if I happen to make that video. If you found Ivan's secrets throughout the video, then comment them down below or tell them yourself in my Discord server, link down in the description. I'm The Terrain, thank you for watching, and as always, stay handsome.